ఇరవై ఏళ్ళ నుంచి ఒక లెక్క ఇప్పటి నుంచి ఒక లెక్క ఆడి కొడుకు వచ్చాడు ఆడి కొడుకు వచ్చాడని చెప్పు When I spoke about Prabhas and the predicament he finds himself in before Adi Purush released, there was a unanimous sense of sadness that had creeped in, especially among those who have carefully followed his acting journey. Prabhas is the only actor that has experienced a new phenomena in Indian cinema, the pressure of a pan-Indian spectacle with every movie release post the monster that was Bahubali. While everyone analyzes the missteps by Prabhas, if you genuinely study it on paper, you would think that they are creatively sound choices. He did a stylized action film with Saho, a romance across continents with themes of destiny with Radhe Sham, and an attempt to do the epic Ramayana on the big screen. You would think that these are sound choices, but But every project somehow faltered. Saho became too ambitious for its own good, getting convoluted as the screenplay progressed and adding in way too many subplots and characters for the audience to eventually play catch up with the film. Radhe Sham integrated unnecessary comedy, hugely depended on its special effects and missed out on exploring themes that could have translated into becoming a romance for the ages. Not to forget both these films were directed by individuals who are not well accustomed with such huge productions. The film that I worked one they were efficient but they were they were splurging a lot for some reason lavish productions okay. huge sets Adi Purush was a colossal mess from an idea perspective for the entire film to be shot on a sound stage and set the terrible visual effects and the borderline offensive writing made it one of the biggest disasters of Hindi cinema you cannot also completely disassociate Prabhas's personal responsibility as an actor the same actor we saw in Mirchi and Chatrapati who would pull off such magnetic energy with his dialogue delivery seemed like a shell of his former self his body language his dialogue delivery his lack of conviction in the role was very apparent especially in films like Radhe Sham and Adi Purush it made me also wonder is the pressure getting to him is this a beast that is becoming uncontrollable is he absolutely overwhelmed for each film to be a spectacle and seeing his statement during the promotions of Radhe Sham made me believe that there is a point of exhaustion in the global expectations each time this man has a release on the cards i'm going to do like love stories just to start i feel i'm going to do a lot maybe a art film also one day <laughs> very small films art films i'm going to try uh, not always big budgets it's too much of stress <laughs> While Salar showed glimpses of what Prabhas and his screen presence can pull off in a commercial action film, it also solidified what a capable director can pull off with a star. I will still stand by the fact that Salar would have hugely benefited if it introduced the audience to the world and its several tribes during its marketing because at one point of time, audiences were mostly creating the family trees in their head as characters explained their relationship and tie-ins to the throne that claims ultimate power. The cl- the climax of salar is still vivid in my memory as it presented the potential of what salar could have been versus having to sit through shruti hasan's terrible american accent and prabhas's mother having a panic attack because he is holding on to a plastic knife however out of all the projects of prabhas in this phase never have i been more stoked and objectively positive about the talent involved the themes that the movie may present and the quality of the marketing snippets we have already seen I am of course talking about Kalki 2898 AD. Our film starts in the Mahabharat and it ends in 2898. That's the title of the film. It's called Kalki 2898 AD. So it spans that 6000 year uh, sort of distance in time. And uh, so trying to create worlds that are there here imagining what it could be like and sort of still keeping it Indian and not make it look like a Blade Runner or a Tokyo Spice Punk was the challenge the one thing i have noticed is the level of clarity nagashwin has with what the movie is and what it wants to say to describe the project as risky would be an understatement because the sheer timeline the film follows taps into worlds that simply have to be imagined versus having any real context or references a screenplay shedding light on a 6000 year time frame is no joke and i think nag is someone who is tapping into such a theme for its intellectually stimulating him at least that's what i can conclude from his interviews versus tapping into a sentiment of a nation that is bound to celebrate films that are based on their revered figures you know who i'm talking about one seat for our hanuman ji 
The look of Amitabh Bachchan across timelines as Ashwathama gives me even more hope because you can see an immortal figure waiting for the right time to strike and assist Kalki in battle. A young Amitabh Bachchan was definitely not on my bingo card of 2024. A figure cursed for life wandering about for centuries, he acknowledges the world needed a figure to lead the charge for the chosen one to end the dire circumstances of Kalyug. Ashwathama prepares for the final battle, presumably assisting Kalki for this cause. There have not been many Indian films that are set in a dystopian era. One can think of the Telugu film Aditya 369, which released in 1991 and was essentially a time travel film where concepts of civilizations becoming technologically advanced but lacking humanity was explored only on the surface. When you look at a disturbing film like Matra Bhumi, which I spoke about many times, one explored the lopsided sex ratio and the existence of women dwindling in a world in the future where characters are representative of the Kalyug, where any form of morality was dead. But we never really took a technological logical and mythological deep dive on a hypothetical future and it seems like Kalki 2898 AD is the answer a film that possibly will become one of the most expensive indian projects to be ever produced if 6000 years behind 2898 was uh, comes to like 3102 BC which is when they say the last avatar of krishna passed The raiders running towards a planet inhabited by humans who can be enslaved for the higher purpose. I would assume this will be representative of the empire and their soldiers, essentially taking the shape of stormtroopers that serve their imperialistic goals. Atrocities are of course committed to any resistance as the empire or whatever evil force aims to hold intergalactic reign. This may be for their rich natural resources, something that we have seen in Dune in the case of Arrakis, which eventually was revealed to be a smoke screen. I would assume in order to protect respective populations Many worlds have their own rebel armies that aim to protect them from the empire. Bloodshed prevails, injustice is rampant. Saswata Chatterjee leads the way in order to make absolute domination a reality for his emperor. Is that emperor Kamal Hassan? It would be lovely to explore. The reason why I'm happily part of this project is that we have a great mythological thread, iconic characters in Mahabharat, Ramayan, and you just have to give a hint of it, and they'll almost know. what would be the next scene seeing a frame of dipika padukone being doubtful of the sensibilities of those she serves this may either be the case of her playing undercover as her origins come from a place that was looted and pillaged by the empire or she has a conscience of the atrocities being caused despite her origin being from the dreadful empire one looks on to the gods who can be the beacon of hope and enter the leader of the rebel army prabhas who is going to be representative of kalki with the sole aim of ending immorality and injustice being caused prabhas really looks in great form from the marketing snippets i've seen and i know this is shocking to say at least looks interested in this project we've never seen india in a future setting or india in a dystopic future setting so uh you know we don't have to always look at uh, new york or london being bombed now we can see our cities also I know many people are creating parallels with Dune, the concept of a world being inhabited by those only caring about their vested interests, themes of worship and religion being dispersed in the screenplay, and an ultimate war that seems inevitable by the downtrodden and those who wield power. But I think ancient Indian history and mythology has far too many references that date back to the Mahabharat and what the eventual Kalyug will shape up like with the existence of figures like Kalki and Ashwathama for this truly to be an original experience versus a borrowed आइडिया हम राम जी की पूजा जरूर करते हैं और उनकी हम बहुत इज्जत करते हैं भगवान मानते हैं लेकिन अगर अब हम उसको एक ऐसा गाप दें जब टीवी पे रामायण आने लग गई महाभारत आने लगी कि हमको वो लगे कि यार हमारे सुपर हीरोज जो हैं वो यही थे भीम बहुत स्ट्रांग है हल्क हाँ जी अर्जुन का एम इतना कमाल है साइक्लॉप्स यू कैन एक्चुअली नो दैट वेस्टर्न सिनेमा ने हमारे अब आप ये देखें अवतार पूरी कृष्ण जी की फिलोसफी है उसके अंदर the 10th and final reincarnation of lord vishnu being a beacon of hope and leading the way to the satyug is something not inspired by themes followed by a hollywood movie no it isn't like dune no hopefully we won't be scarred like the dialogues of brahmastra i have hopes on nagashwin pulling this off and prabhas to finally have a movie under his kitty that is unanimously loved this may become the biggest event of 2024 project k has been uh, uh, an, a very very unusual a very exciting experience uh, the kind of research that has been done and i keep questioning nagi all the time you know how did he think of this i mean what was he drinking what was he smoking <laughs> 
<laughs> and that was a video guys write down in the comments below what are your expectations of kalki to wait 9880 and what do you think will be the integration of ashwathama in the story more importantly is kamal hasan playing the big bad boss of this world please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching